throughout the day, there are so many factors that can add up to stress you out. Jobs, bills, and homework. A lot of teenagers are like forced to be the mature one by their families. Because you're mainly stuck with work, homework, taking care of my siblings. Dealing with parents, dealing with homework, projects. You get homework from this subject and that subject, and then it just like all piles up onto you. They like all the sign stuff at the same time, and it's just like a lot. They all give it out at the same time, and we're all just, oh, I gotta get this finished. Completing all my schoolwork, and not just completing it, excelling in the content that I'm given. I have a hard time at home. I'm not close to my parents. I'm not close to my siblings. And then my siblings always irritate me making me feel um, unwanted. Not feeling on my stomach hurting in the mornings if I wake up or wake up with a headache. Sometimes our bus driver screams at us. I even got suspended by her. And like you're trying to um, to like keep all of this together. And then that's when the stress comes in and then the depression. We sometimes get lonely and we get picked on a lot. Going home and having parents call me hurtful names and I had people tell me I'm not worth living. People make hate remarks on social media, Twitter, Instagram. There's such high standards set for what people are supposed to look like and act like. You're still trying to figure out who you really are, so it's pretty difficult like right now. I have struggled with depression since I can remember, honestly. There's always been some feeling of hopelessness or worthlessness. I've had experience with depression and anxiety myself because for the past year my stepdad went to jail and I basically thought it was my fault for a while because I was around him when everything went down. When I was little, I used to get molested. It was a never ending like dark, whole like I just felt like I was just falling and falling and falling and just couldn't get up and no one would understand. Around the age of 13 or 14 when both my grandparents died in the same week um, a lot of pressure was put on me to you know help people out throughout it and not be sad. When adults say that you choose how you feel, you choose if you're happy, you choose if you're anxious, you choose if you're depressed. I can't choose how I feel. But when you're told that your feelings don't matter as much as an adult, or that it, your opinions aren't as important, it kind of feels like you don't matter. Kids that aren't having suicidal thoughts, they might just start off small, but then if he or she tells somebody and then they don't care, then it, it can go really big into something that wasn't supposed to be. No one just wakes up one morning living happy, becomes stressed in one day and decide to kill themselves. It's something that is, it happens over a long period of time and it just progressively gets worse. I was sitting in class and this one kid walked up and called me something, I don't know but at that point the whole world just basically caved in and I just had a mental breakdown. The stress finally overwhelmed me. It's like a little um, bu bucket and each time something happens another drop falls in there until the point where it gets full and then it's just one little thing that causes them to think that they should just end it. My scariest time in my life, I think, was when my stepdad went to jail and I was talking to mom and I told her I didn't want to live anymore and about, honestly, committed suicide right then and there. I have a couple friends that, like, have thought about killing themselves or, like, have attempted it, like, some of my friends, they've tried numerous times. And I actually tried four times trying to leave the earth. My freshman year, I tried to overdose on pills. I have attempted suicide once by, uh, I took like, I think I took a whole bottle of ibuprofen. In my eighth grade year, I tried to kill myself. I was cutting. 
I tried to overdose on like 20 pills. Last year, I had a suicide attempt. I thought about it for a while and I just, I guess I never, no one ever asked. I felt like there was no other option because no one was there for me. Nobody cared, nothing mattered, and I thought it would be better just to end it. I remember I was really lonely, it just kind of felt like nobody cared, and that led to suicidal thoughts. My brother said, told my mom that he wasn't gonna help her buy the house. So I felt like if I was gone, he would help her buy the house and my mom would get what she wanted. I was thinking a lot of this pressure would be taken off of me and like I wouldn't feel any of this pain anymore and then uh, it just, I was not thinking right. I was just tired of being hurt by the ones that are supposed to love me. I felt like, why am I even on this earth if everyone's just gonna put me down? Cause I was like, maybe the world will be a better place if I wasn't here since everyone hates me so much. Why me? Why was I put on this earth just to have that happen to me? And for me to feel like I'm damaged for the rest of my life. At the time, I thought there was no help. Hel I thought help was out the window by then because of how hurt I was from other people doing things to me. People that commit suicide want help. It's just not reachable for them. And it's because we really don't know what's wrong with us. We're trying to figure that out ourselves. I made good grades and everything, but I just couldn't see it. I didn't love myself. They just don't know who to talk to, or they're too scared to talk to somebody because they might be scared that they won't like them. I think they don't ask for help because they feel like if they do, then that could, that could make situations even worse than they already are. I used to tend to bottle up all my emotions because I didn't want to let anyone else feel it or know that I wasn't okay. Um, I used to try to keep stuff bottled up because I felt like, oh, I'm, I've always been like kind of the popular girl or whatever, and I didn't want anyone to see me like this or to know that it's bothering me. Because when you get depressed and stuff, you shut everyone out, and that helps out when someone's there that's not gonna let you shut them out. We just need someone to talk to sometimes. Everyone talks about cancer. You see cancer ads on TV, cancer research ads. Where's the advertisements for trying to get people with anxiety disorders help or depression? We need to get rid of the stigma around not being mentally healthy. If I could choose to be happy, I would. But you can't, you've gotta to work towards it. I get past those days by friends and family being around me and telling myself that I can overcome anything that I need to overcome, even though it's hard and difficult to believe though sometimes. But I do it. I tell myself like, there's gonna be a better day. There's gonna be a better day tomorrow or the next day or the day after that. It's not just gonna constantly be this. You need to find a place or person to throw up on and just vent to. I used to have a teacher, my English teacher. She was always, she always liked me because I could talk to her about almost anything. She was a mentor in the school. I have trust issues. I just don't talk to everyone about anything. I have to trust them first, but I do talk to friends that I trust about what it goes on. My oldest sister, she's kind of my role model. She has two kids. When I used to have bad thoughts, I'd think about them and how their life would be growing on without me and that just made me sad because I know that I want to be a part of their lives when they grow up. I have a diary at 20 years old and I write in it every night. It makes me feel like, wow, I'm actually getting out how I feel and it feels better because then you don't feel like whoever you're confiding in or venting to is gonna go and run off and tell all your secrets. You may not be able to talk to your family or you might be afraid. If anything, write it down. Talk to your animal if you have one. Because I used to talk to my dog. She can't say nothing I used to tell her to nobody. Art is my escape from the real world. I can paint or I can draw or I can write any kind of reality I want. For the people that are religious, God is there for you too at the end of the day even when nobody else is. It took a lot of spirituality 
I had to build build myself up first and start opening up to people. I had to let let my guard down sometimes. So that started helping me. So I just had to work on myself as a person and try to get through that. No matter what life gives at you or throws at you, there's always a way to overcome it. Whether it is talking to someone or just hanging out with friends or getting your mind off of it. I believe all cases are fixable. There's no kid that's lost in suicide. If you're suffering from depression or anxiety or grief, the best advice I have is that to find something that you can do to keep your mind off of everything else. I recommend talking to anyone that's been through the same situation or counselor or someone that can help you through that. It's not good to keep it to yourself. You, you always want to go seek out help. It may seem like rough right now because you're going through it and it may seem like you're all alone, but you're never alone. You're not the only one who has this problem. Other kids have the problem. And by working together, you can get through it. I know it's scary, but ask a friend to hang out. Like grab food, go to the movies, and realize that, you know, that friend, they're, they're enjoying their time with you, they wanna be there with you. Like you're not worthless. Like this person enjoys you being here and spending time with you. And if there is absolutely no one on this whole like earth that you feel like I can't trust them to talk to, call a hotline. It'll be anonymous and no one will know it's you, so you don't have to worry about someone finding out that you called and that you're going through it. But I would still recommend to talk to someone that you know about it and that you trust. Keep trying. Don't give up. Giving up is just letting the bad win. It's like a superhero. You want the good, the good superhero to prevail over the evil villain, and that superhero is an activity a counselor, something. You can't hide, it's not gonna make it any better. It's, it's, you're just digging yourself a hole that gets deeper and deeper and harder and harder to get out of. Some people think that talking to someone else is a sign of giving in, and it's, it's not that at all. It's, it's realizing that you are having this problem and you're trying to fix it. Just because you're crying doesn't make you a weak person. Keeping all, everything inside of us makes us weak because it eats us alive and we think about it. But if we say it, when we speak it, it's like something is exiting your body and you just feel so much better. The world will stop for you and, and people will help you because there's this stigma around depression and anxiety that no one can talk about it. But if you talk about it, then maybe you can get the help you need. Especially if you're struggling with depression and anxiety, because you might live with it your whole life, but it shouldn't be something that defines you. When you try to overcome it, it might seem like it's not going in your favor and it takes a longer time to do things, but in reality, it just takes time. There's gonna be times you have a rough day and frustrated, but that's when you look in the mirror and you just take deep breaths and you let it go, because you're gonna have another day, you're gonna have a new day to reset and you don't have to worry about what happened that day. God made us for a reason. And then for the ones that do not believe in God, there are beautiful things in this world. The thought of me not being there for his birthday or any other of my families, just because I, like for a moment, I didn't feel like I was worth it. It's very depressing. I had to gain my mom's trust again because a parent losing their child is a very hard thing to bear. Well, whenever I look back on it now, I realized how many people actually would care. And I was just kind of being selfish, think, only thinking about myself whenever I should have been thinking about the people around me. The happiest moment of my life was probably when I was out of school for a week. And uh, I came back and everybody was happy, excited, and just all around happy to see me. And that made me feel so good to know that so many people were like anticipating my arrival. I felt happy when I actually got to express myself and a counselor sat down with me and my dad, and I got to actually tell him how I felt. And it was just a relief. Just love yourself and do what makes you happy no matter what, because at the end of the day, your opinion and your dreams and goals is all that matters. 
I'm worth living and I am a human being and we're going to make mistakes, but we're going to learn from them. No one's perfect on earth. I don't care what you look like. I don't care. I don't even care what you act like. If you need somebody to listen, then I'll always be there. There is someone that cares and there are people that will listen and you don't have to do anything extreme like kill yourself. It has affected me, but I'm, I'm stronger now and I'm over, you know, coming everything that's happened to me and that's why I'm willing to speak up. The thing that gives me hope is knowing that there are younger kids in life that are going through the same thing I am and sometimes worse and knowing that if I can do it, I can be an idol so they can do it. I want to help people, help kids who are going through what I went through and I don't want that to happen to them. I'm doing better and better because I'm getting help. I talked to my counselors, they got me a social worker at school. There's so many things that can help and you may not even know. I didn't know there were so many resources out there. You just have to speak up. I mean, I'm not happy all the time, but it's like that moment when I step, up, step in the clubhouse and get around people who understand me. It's like everybody can see I'm happy. Everybody is equal. Your life is not meaningless. And you deserve the best. And uh, I wish somebody had told me that when I was younger. It doesn't matter if you're a jock or you play football or you're like in band. It, it, it's, it's the same thing all around. And if people would just understand that and realize that and talk to each other about it, I think it would make a big, big difference. If my suicide attempt was actual, like I wasn't here today thinking about it, I'm so glad that I'm here.